we're in our 2018 Ford Fusion. We're going to go ahead and we're going to disassemble the items needed to install our plug and play remote starting system into this vehicle. We're going to start with an 8 millimeter on a ratchet. I'm going to take the 8 millimeter nut off on the uh, driver's side of the diagnostic plug. And we're going to remove a 7 millimeter screw on the other side of the diagnostic plug. It's kind of uh, tight with the airbag here, but uh, in order to not have to take out the airbag, we can squeeze in here and take the 7 millimeter out. This will release the diagnostic plug. We're going to go ahead and leave it here released, and we're going to drop down the driver's side dash. I'm going to drop the driver's side dash. I'm going to use our plastic tool, insert it in the crack here, and just pop the clips that hold the dash in place. I'm going to do this on the other side also. And the dash will drop down. I'm going to remove the sound deadening pad here. We'll replace it when we're done. And we're going to be able to access our diagnostic plug or what's called the gateway module. Our T-harness is going to plug into the gateway. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to unplug the gateway plug. There's a clip right here. We're going to press the clip and we're going to unplug the gateway from the vehicle. We're going to install the warm car now plug and play remote start solution for Fusion and F-150. We're going to uh, start with our T-harness. We're going to have a, a selector to either make it a type 1 or type 2 installation. On your version the plugs will be labeled. On my version this piece of tape denotes type 1. So our instructions indicate this vehicle is a type 1 vehicle so we're going to go ahead and we're going to plug in the type 1 plug into our T-harness plug. So there, there's one plug on this side and there's two male plugs on this side for your different choices. So we're going to plug the type 1 in. Um, we have our device plugged in. There's only one plug, our blue plug. We're going to go ahead and we're going to install the device. First we want to unplug the gateway module or the diagnostic plug from the back and we want to plug our T-harness into the plug that we've just removed from the gateway module and then we want to plug the other end of the T-harness into the gateway module. At this point our module is going to have a red LED indicating it's waiting for programming. Now this installation is the same on key start vehicles and push to start vehicle. This vehicle happens to be a push to start vehicle. So the only difference in the installation is when you program it, instead of turning the ignition on by pushing the push to start button, you're going to place the key in the ignition and turn the ignition to the on or run position. With the push to start vehicle, make sure you have your fobs in the vehicle and we're going to press the push to start button one time. The module is going to blink the sequence you're seeing to indicate that programming was successful. Please watch our next video to show you what happens if you've selected the wrong install type and what you can do to correct it. When we have the module plugged in, we're going to have a red LED lit on our device. We're going to go ahead, and if it was a key start vehicle, we would place the key in the ignition and turn the ignition to the run position. This is a push to start vehicle. Uh, by the way, the installation is exactly the same. There's no difference in the installation. 
We're going to go ahead and we're going to turn on the ignition to the vehicle by pressing the push to start button. Again, if it was a key start, you'd put the key in the ignition and turn the ignition to the run position. So we've turned on the ignition and we have a flashing orange light. This is an indication that we do not have the correct type selected. So we're going to shut the ignition off. We're going to remove the blue plug. We're going to go back to our type selection. We're going to plug in the opposite plug or the type one plug on our device. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to plug the blue plug back into the device. It's going to continue blinking the error code until we turn on the ignition to the vehicle, either putting the key in and turning the key to run or pressing the push to start button, depending on which vehicle you have. The module is going to successfully complete programming. At this point forward, we can activate remote start using the OEM remote. We're going to lock the doors three times. This is going to trigger the vehicle to start by remote. Our vehicle is a hybrid and it is running right now. Our runtime is set for 15 minutes. We can turn the vehicle off by pressing the brake pedal or locking the doors again three times. Now this system gives you access to the vehicle menu options up on the instrument cluster. So you can go in and you can select the runtime right up in the vehicle menu screen by toggling through the menus. Now we're outside the vehicle and we're going to activate remote start. Now our vehicle is a hybrid. So she's up and running right now. Now if we wanted to turn the vehicle off, we could simply lock the doors three times again. To drive our remotely started vehicle, we want to enter the vehicle using the OEM fob. And if it's a push to start vehicle, we're going to do exactly what it says on the dash. We're going to press the start button after we enter the vehicle to drive the vehicle. If it's a key start vehicle, we're simply going to turn the ignition to the run position. We also offer the My Car cell phone upgrade for this unit. It is the simplest way to install smartphone control. We're going to go ahead and we're going to take our module we're going to locate the white plug on the top of the module. We're going to take our pre-configured my car, our warm car now pre-configured my car, and we're going to plug in our white plug into the white port. When we do this, the my car will begin searching for cellular and GPS signals. Uh, the green light and the red light will blink while they're looking for a signal. When the device is successfully locked on, the lights will come on steady and stay on steady. So there's also a this side down stamped into one side of the case. We want to make sure we mount it with the correct side facing down. Right now I'm going to set it up and I'm just going to let it acquire its signal right here on the seat. And when it acquires a signal, we're going to go ahead and we're going to test our device. Our cell phone controller is ready to test. The green light is on steady. Okay, we have our My Car app up and running. We're going to go ahead and we're going to lock the doors with the My Car. The doors are locked and we have a confirmation on our unit that the doors are locked. We're going to go ahead and we're going to unlock the doors.
As our unlock command has been received, we're going to start the vehicle. The vehicle is up and running, showing a runtime of 14 minutes, 49 seconds left. We can locate our vehicle also. And they're showing right where it is. And now we can also pop the trunk of the vehicle. There's our trunk. So we have full telematic smartphone control. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to shut the vehicle off. And there we have our vehicle turning off. On the install that we just did, we didn't have to make a connection to the parking lights. If you'd like to make a connection to the parking lights, there's three wires uh, that will run over to the parking lights. Now, I, I know I see a, a much more expensive version of this with an integrated parking light plug. It's really unneeded. It adds a lot of expense to the system. Um, to unplug the light switch, the clip is on this side. Uh, we're going to reach up on the back. We're going to press the clip with our fingernail, and we're going to unplug the plug. We're going to identify our wires. We're looking at pin 11. Uh, that's on the bottom row. That's three pins in, and you got to remember to count empty pins. So that would bring us to a solid gray wire. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to isolate that wire. And we're going to put a posi tap on it. Uh, posi tap is a solderless, toolless connector that I use. And uh, it comes in your kit. You can unscrew the posi tap. There's an end with a groove. And then there's an end with a needle. We're going to slip the wire in the groove. We're going to tighten the piece with a needle down onto the wire. Now the needle is going to pierce the insulation of the wire and provide a connection point. This is what it looks like with it on. So on the top, we're going to look at it from the back with the clip facing up. We're going to want to go over four pins to pin four. And don't forget to count the empty pins. There's actually two empty pins, three, and then the fourth wire in is going to, uh, it appears to be like a violet with a black stripe on it. So when we have this violet with a black stripe, we're going to want to get the tape back a little bit. Um, tape is really hard to cut, so I'm just pulling it back. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut a little bit of the tape because I would like to stay further back on the plug. Okay, so we've moved the uh, tape up a little bit. We have access to our pin four wire. We're just going to go ahead and we're going to clip the wire. If we clip it, we're going to strip back about a half an inch. And we're going to take our wires, we're going to take our orange and uh, red, and we're going to connect it to the connector side of our cut wire. Now we're going to take our yellow red, and we're going to connect it to the vehicle side of our cut wire. Well, we have two wire nuts. We're going to go ahead and put our wire nuts on. Now, some people are concerned that wire nuts could vibrate off. Um, you can wrap them with tape, but if you use that theory, then every screw in this vehicle should vibrate out. Um, so we're going to put a wire nut on the other side. We're just going to make sure they're really tight. And then our activation wire, we're just going to want to strip about a quarter inch of that just like that, and we're going to loosen the collar of our posi tap that's on the other side of the posi tap on the end here. We're going to put our wire into the posi tap and we're going to push down until the wire bottoms out. We're going to tighten the posi tap. Now our parking lights are connected. We just need to plug the plug back in. So we'll reach up, clip facing that way. 
and we'll plug our plug back in. Now our parking lights are hooked up to our device and we can blink out the error codes and things like that by connecting the parking lights. On our device variations with a toggle switch, if you have the uh, remote starter override switch on and you go to remote start the vehicle and it blinks an error code or clicks, then what you need to do is just switch the switch to the opposite position and go ahead and activate the remote starter. So the vehicle is successfully started.